Dodging outfalls is a skill nobody talks about. You're so close to your opponent in pickleball that by the time you react to their shot, it's too late and you're hitting it. The proper approach, you're gonna look at your opponent's cues and tells before they even strike the ball, giving you the highest percentage to dodge their out ball. So you're making a split second decision before your opponent even hits the ball on if you're gonna let it go or if you're gonna hit it. Now we're gonna cover the personal cues that I look for in my opponent before they strike the ball. And then I'm gonna give you some live examples and breakdowns of the most common scenarios where balls are going out. The first thing we're gonna take a mental note of is the height of the ball that my opponent is attacking. Are they trying to speed up a ball that's this height? Or are they trying to speed up a ball that's this height? The lower a ball is, the more likely it's gonna go out. If my opponent ever speeds up a ball from this height, I'm already telling myself mentally, prepare to let it go. On the other hand, if the ball is about waist height and I know my opponent is gonna speed it up, I'm gonna say to myself mentally, this ball's probably gonna go in, I'm gonna react to wherever they hit it. We're gonna play out a couple points. Pay attention to where Ridley speeds up the ball from. I'm gonna make a decision on either hitting it or letting it go. That ball was out by about 25 feet. Out, almost an eye shot. Depending on the dink that I hit to my opponents, I'm predetermining if they were to speed it up, it's probably gonna go out or it's probably gonna go in. That's the next level mindset shift that these pro players are doing. So if I hit a dink that I know is super low and I feel confident in, I'm already telling myself this ball's not gonna get sped up. And if it is, I'm letting it go. The second tell that we're gonna cover is when things get out of the ordinary with our opponent's form. If my opponent's form when dinking looks like this, and then out of nowhere, they get a big backswing, or it looks like this, and then out of nowhere, they change their feet, that's a tell to me that the ball's gonna come in pretty fast with probably not much control. His dinks looked completely normal, and then I saw a big backswing telling me the ball's going out. The third cue we're gonna cover is if somebody is frantic or not in total control of their body, the ball is going out. The most common example of this is when the serving team serves the ball, the opponents hit a weak return in the middle of the court, and then the serving team runs and hits that shot. I see that so much with almost all of my students. That ball that we're racing to and off balance when we hit, not only does it sail way long, it's the wrong shot selection. We should just try to get our paddle on it to hit a drop into the kitchen. Here's an example the wrong way. Here's what you should do. This same concept applies to dinks. If I'm over here and I get a dink to the middle and I race to hit it, that ball is going out more often than not. When your opponent is speeding a ball up, if they are not in complete control with composure across their body, the ball is going out. Those are all the cues you should be looking for and predetermining is the ball going in, is the ball going out. Now we're gonna go over a super practical and common example that I see people hitting so many out balls. Learn this and it will up your game. While we're dinking cross court, we already know it's our responsibility to cover the middle. We need to learn and ingrain in our head that if our opponent cross court from us is going to speed up the ball, it's only our responsibility to protect our body and the middle. Anything on this side of me is out. The average player has such a hard time covering the middle because they're trying to be in too many places. They're trying to cover here, they're trying to cover here, they're trying to cover out here. The way you'll be a master at covering the middle 
and not hitting out balls is this. You want to pretend that there's a force field around you. Whenever the ball is diagonal from you, you have to train yourself that you can't go this way and you can't raise up. All you're covering is your body and here. When all you have to cover is this, it makes it really easy to get everything. You can see how soft he's hitting it and they're all going out. That gives me a lot of safety in my mind. Only if it's in my strike zone here or here, I'm swinging. Anything else, I'm not even reacting to. That's everything you need to know about not hitting out balls. If you learned something, send this video to a friend and subscribe.